tuned in to the All My Friends podcast. I hope you're well and you're having a great day wherever you are. I'm the host Liam Oliver and my guest today is Doodle MCR co-founder and Ripe radio station head Charlie Flegg. Charlie has been working tirelessly the past few months getting the new community radio station Ripe Radio up and running. Ripe Radio is a station for lovers of electronic dance music of all stripes and has shows hosted by AMF collaborators, Night School, Modern Logic, and Marco Gianni. And let's not forget the All My Friends Tea Time show, the last Friday of every month, seven till nine. Don't you fucking touch that dial. (laughs) Um, (laughs) We're going to be chatting about everything digital radio on this podcast, setting it up, show management, and the unforeseen hurdles you'll face when starting your own station. I also want to ask Charlie about the explosion of digital radio and what his views are on dance music's move away from the traditional events-based model of business towards a more varied creative output. Before I go any further, please do subscribe and give us a thumbs up if you're on YouTube or SoundCloud. Every subscribe helps and it means a lot. With the formalities out the way, Charlie, hello. Thanks for coming on the podcast. How are we? All good? (laughs) Really good, thank you. Yeah, not too bad. Uh, busy, busy at work, but looking forward to Christmas. Uh, you know, bored of all this lockdown business as well, but we're all in the same boat, I suppose. Um, mm. Very much looking forward to getting back to normality. I miss DJing at the weekends. Uh, didn't think I would as much as I do, you know. Um, you know, it's just when it's, when it's not there, you do miss it. It's one of those things, I suppose. At the time, it was a bit of a, at times, it could have been a bit of a chore. Um, but I, I, yeah, I really do miss it. You know, it's an excuse to kind of uh, get your tunes together, get yourself sorted. Um, mm-hmm. Without that, I don't, I don't know. I suppose this this radio show um, is a bit less frequent. I suppose it's not two or three times a week. It's uh, you know once a month, more or less. Therefore, mm-hmm. um, yeah, playing out. I do miss that. Um, definitely miss going clubbing. Definitely miss um, seeing people. Um, and, you know, away from music, I think it's just the little things I've been missing as well. My, <clears throat> my auntie lives in a, a sh- you know, a shitty little town in South Wales. Mm-hmm. And it's just taken for granted the opportunity to go and do little things like that. I did, that came across my mind the other day, actually. I want to go mm-hmm. see my auntie Viv. And I was like, oh, I can't, you know. But um, mm-hmm. apart from that, I'm fine. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Where were you, uh, where have you been DJing then? Well, pre- post, pre-COVID, sorry. Where were you, uh, where were you playing out? Yeah, um, let's. Yeah, I was doing a bits and bobs in um, Evelyn's. I was mm-hmm. doing bits and bobs in the Ivy um, and the de- uh, not definitely the Trough in the Northern Quarter, to name three. You know, those oh, kind of cool. those, those kind of like bar venues, bar gigs, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I went to the I you went know, to really the Ivy. Them. I went to the Ivy for my thirtieth, uh, and my girlfriend loves it. and wants to go back right. every week now. It's a, it's a really nice. I imagine it's quite a nice place to play some music. Um, bit off the uh, bit off the. Which, the regular track for me. I don't normally go to that end of town, but it was a 30th and we were out for a treat. And uh, I know the middle floor, I, Ivy Asia. The middle floor. Yeah, it's just re- it's yeah, really, really pretty. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's, I mean, it's like, I mean, the, the first, when, they, when they kind of had us in um, to play music, we had a kind of introductory uh, evening to go and see the place. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a few of us were DJing that evening and things, but um, it was like walking through um, an art gallery or a kind of um, museum at times with all those kind of exhibits and mm. framed artifacts and things. And, the, uh, you know, it's all the plants in there um, is something to behold, really, isn't it? Someone, someone must take a lot of care and attention with those, with those plants. Um, but yeah, it's a nice venue. It, like I said, same for me, really. I wouldn't necessarily venture down that neck of the woods mm-hmm. or really even, you know, perhaps, perhaps go to those kind of places. But, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a spectacle and it's, you know, for your 30th, yeah, it's the perfect kind yeah. of place, isn't it? Yeah, I think we're, uh, we are very close to actually veering off and talking about something completely different to digital radio here. We could, we could do an entire show about playing bar gigs and the, the special yeah, skill sets that you need <laughs> to make that a real success. Maybe we've got time at the end, we can circle back and do that, but I don't want to, uh, yeah, absolutely, I, don't, yeah. I don't want us to go off on a tangent before we've even started. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. Um, 
so let's before we get into digital radio um, and radio in general, let's talk a bit about you. Um, okay. It'd be great to hear about you know your DJ journey, you know setting up Doodle, and what led you to your latest venture, you know, Right Radio. Yeah, um, I suppose like everyone else, started off as a bit of a hobby. Um, I was I'm from South Wales, and I moved up to Manchester uh, as a student. Mm -hmm. um, didn't really have huge amounts of exposure to electronic music. Uh, you know, I was a bit of an indie kid, I suppose, when I moved up, first of all. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously, you know, as is the case with a lot of people, um, kind of got introduced to clubbing via my friends that had been into it for a while and been going out um, to Cream and Liverpool and places like that. So I started off, um, I suppose, listening to trance music because I was a regular at Tangled. I don't know if you've heard of Tangled uh, on Oxford Road. Um, I think it's the, I think it might even be the longest running house night ever. I think it ran for about 10 years, but, but not only that, it was a weekly night as well. So mm. um, we were usually kind of regulars, either Tangled or Sankey's. We used to go to tribal sessions a lot, that kind of thing. So it was mm. one of those two really. But um, yeah, so got into DJing just, I suppose, through, through the music, through enjoying the music really, I suppose, and picking records up. Um, in terms of, I suppose in terms of Doodle, that wasn't till some years later, I'd moved back to Swansea. Mm -hmm. So I met Will, um, who obviously now runs the station with us. Um, and it was his idea, really, but I'll talk about, talk about that in a moment. Um, so I bumped into Will in uh, an open decks night in Swansea. He was studying there, and I was living there at the time. Um, we put on some, I don't know, some small-scale parties, literally one or two in Swansea. We, Because uh, he was a student at the time, he ran um, the student radio station at the university as well. So I, we did little kind of shows together there as well. So that kind of sowed the seed for what we were to do a few years later. Um, so, yeah, to fast forward a bit, we... You know, he moved, we, well, we both moved to Manchester at different times. Um, but with Manchester being a bit more of a, an open place to electronic music, you know, a uh, huge musical history and uh, just a hotbed of everything going on, really. that every, every, Everyone that we were into was playing regularly. Uh, we were going out clubbing quite a bit. Um, so we thought, yeah, I mean, it's, it's an ideal place to get a, a club night off the ground, really. You know, it's always what we kind of, we, 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 we talked about it for years, doing it properly, let's say, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so we got it off the ground eventually. Had some incredible, uh, very, actually very proud of the, um, the bookings we've had over the years. Um, we've had people like Todd Terrier, Nebraska, Jamie Vogel, uh, Jamie three two six, Brayman Hamo, Lawrence Guy, Francis Inferno Orchestra. Francis Inferno Orchestra. We had on for the um, the fifth birthday. We've had Wolf Music, Detroit Swindle. We gave them their or Dam Dam Swindle as they are now. Um, we gave them their UK debut. Um, yeah, so you know, hugely proud of what we've achieved, really, in terms of the bookings and things. Um, we. We lost a lot of money uh, at the, in the early days. Um, Will moved to London, and it became apparent that you know, I, you know, I think it was a. Um, we realised pretty quick uh, how hard it is to run a night, um, the dedication you've got to have to to make it a success. I suppose. Mm -hmm. uh, Will moved to London, like I said. So it kind of we kind of disbanded, I suppose, but we never officially said that's it. That's the end of it, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um so i basically um i kind of started again i kind of started again some years later but in terms of the the ripe radio thing uh i think it was a it was a semi-joint decision will will kind of had the inklings of it for a little while he was he was talking about it for a little bit um and i suppose generally speaking we wanted to kind of do something together again really because mm -hmm. it's been all those years since we kind of jointly um, worked on anything like this before. So um, yeah, just just, a, just more of a move to kind of do, do something collaboratively once more, I suppose, really. Um, yeah, so he's, he's the brains, I suppose, behind the operation. He's got it off the ground. He'd already set up the platform. He'd uh, had a, a general um, view of what he wanted to achieve, I suppose. Um, I suppose for me, carry on on with Doodle, which I'll talk about later on, maybe. Um, so I, I kind of, I kind of got doodle off the ground a, a little bit uh, after we split up, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd been, 
going to Croatia quite a lot. I'd been putting on a few parties, maybe perhaps doing a bit more partying than Will had. Um, so I suppose I, I'd kind of re retained a lot of contact, I suppose. So that's kind of how, so I've kind of taken on that role in terms of reaching out to people like yourself, Liam, and all the other, all the other gangs and crews that are part of it. So um, I've been kind of been the middleman in terms of um, liaising with everyone, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Amazing. There's loads of things we can pick up on there. I think one of the things that really stuck out for me is the story that you hear time and time again about people who put on club nights and you inevitably lose loads of money. It's a really, really <clears> dicey yeah. game where it must mm. be so difficult to keep motivated to, to be running events when the economics just yeah. on so many levels work against you. You know, we're going to chat about it a bit further down the line and why maybe yeah. that leads to a move to, to radio. But um, yeah, you're not the first person to ever tell me um, an anecdote like that. And I don't think you're going to be the last. <laughs> and I think it's something that is like a dance community we need to look at more closely. And I do think in a way yeah. COVID is going to, change that because people aren't going to be able to charge these massive fees anymore I think djs who are you know full-time djs are probably going to have to be looking close to home for smaller venues to to um to find gigs so it you know i don't want to say i'm not rubbing my hands in glee but it's like maybe yeah. that we could see a positive change in the way that we we run our our club culture because of this and if that's one small silver lining Maybe that's mm. the case. Another thing Absolutely. I wanted to ask you quickly as well before we move on is I'm just looking at some of the artists you've mentioned in the notes here, you know, Medler, Detroit Swindle, uh, yeah. Wolf Music, Lafar, like Lawrence Guy, like these are like obviously phenomenal artists I really, really like. Um, yeah. And you said sort of like when you're at university, you know, you sort of went to Tangle and I, I seem to get the feeling that you had more of like a, very much like a, maybe like a tech house sort of love and then, you went back to Swansea and then you've booked artists, which may be a bit more, I've got a world music vibe to them. Is that a maybe change in taste that has been, you've seen happen or is it just because I went through a very similar sort of transition in music to okay. the artists that were, you're looking at now. Have you found that as well? Or do you think it's just a, like sort of like a symptom of getting a bit older? You just like different tunes. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely, yeah. do you know what the, the BPMs, I've, I've gone down and down and down over the years. There's no doubt about that. Um, I just think, yeah, I mean, this, this will amaze you. I think, um, like I said, I was an indie kid, pretty much. Wasn't really, uh, didn't really know a lot of the history of electronic music at all, really. I mean, this another thing that will make you laugh. When, um, when, I was at, uh, when I was in my student halls, and I was living in halls uh, just off Oxford Road, I remember flicking through the Metro and there, were, there was, uh, it was a, at the time they were making the, the film uh, 24 Hour Party People mm -hmm. and they needed extras for, this, for the dancing scenes in the Hacienda and uh, I didn't know what the Hacienda was at the time, you know, <laughs> that, 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 that's how, you know, that's how uh, out of touch I was at the time, just didn't have that education, didn't have that kind of, um, wasn't aware of the, the deep history of electronic music at all. So, um, yeah, so I think like a lot of people got into it through like Hard House and Trance and that was mm -hmm. my kind of opening. And, um, and I didn't, you know, I didn't really, it was, it, was, it was, again, it was years later that I kind of understood the real connection between house and disco, I suppose. Then I went through a big disco phase and like mm -hmm. I think it's a nat natural progression to, to, to be interested and to kind of uh, veer towards like the people I've mentioned in terms of the, the bookings we had, I mm -hmm. suppose. And I think at the time... Um, I might mention this later on, but I think, you know, there seemed to be, to me anyway, um, you know, those kind of bookings, um, the Brayman Hamos, the, the Wolf Musics, the, the, the Detroit Swindles, I suppose throughout, throughout the time that we put in the parties on, that um, it didn't seem like many other promoters were booking those kind of people. I think, you know, I think mm -hmm. we had a role to play. I think, you know, we had, a, you know, it was, it's only right that a city in like Manchester, in my opinion, um, had those kind of guests on, I think, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, like I said, going back, yeah, very proud of what we what we achieved. The parties were great, they were well attended. Um, the artwork was brilliant, you know, and um, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, just, yeah, just, you know, I mean, and again, we, 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 we've, we've not, certainly haven't stopped or anything like that. You know, we've, mm -hmm. we've changed direction. We've got older, um, your priorities change and I think it maybe it's more about like you said it's not necessarily a COVID thing but it's I think as you get older you appreciate um 
the actual essence of a good party. Um, mm. And it doesn't have to be huge names. It doesn't have to be this, that. No, as long as you've got your mates, um, a good sound system, and you know there's going to be good music. Um, and that's what I suppose, I think one of the other things we've, we've been known for is these boat parties that we put on. Mm-hmm. um where we we barely promote them at all we just kind of book book a boat uh we might book we've had you know one of your um previous contributors liam um mike amara we've had mm-hmm. um los goddard uh like i said you know they're not necessarily big names um but they you know for a fact they're they're, they're fabulous local talent mm-hmm. um and you know you're in for a good night but um I don't know how we veered off to that, sorry. <laughs> I mean, that's the whole point of the show. Like, yeah, if it was a straight <laughs> bam, 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 question, answer, question, answer, I don't think it'd be very compelling listening. Like, yeah, keep good, going, go, good, yeah. go down these rabbit holes, man. That's what we want. <laughs> that's, good. that's good, that's good. That's cool, yeah. Um, cool. So, yeah, I suppose let's get on to um, radio. You know, why start a station? Um, you know, what for you makes it such a good vehicle for promoting dance music and club culture? Well, in terms of in terms of us, like I said, it was for, it was an excuse really for Will and I to to do something together. Mm-hmm. Um, really, we've been looking for something, whatever it was, um, to do together. And I think it was a creative outlet, I suppose. And there's so many others that are in that kind of same boat at the moment regarding um, the way the world is at the moment. Um, I suppose you know, without being able. To, to go out without being able to physically be in the company of people, uh, you know, come around and have a mix, if, even, even on that basic level, you know, mm-hmm. um, you still wanted to be involved in music. Like I said, you know, you couldn't go out and um, play music in bars like I used to, that kind of thing. Um, and I suppose it was a very good excuse to develop a platform where like-minded people, friends, and just bring people together, you know, people, and as you know, people on the station, and. Um, not everyone, or at least not everyone we've put the idea to, um, are DJs or promoters or, or mm-hmm. people that run club nights. Then they're, they're, they're friends who I know have got a fabulous taste in music um, mm-hmm. and with maybe a great record collection, you know, uh, albeit with their, sending their shows in remotely. It's not, mm-hmm. it's not um, a station where we've got a, a studio or anything at the moment. But yeah, it's just meant we can reconnect with people uh, and, 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 you know, in my case, it's meant just picking a, a, an opportunity to pick up the phone and speak to people I've not spoken to for ages or so in, in like yourself, you know, a, a new friendship has blossomed. And it's, 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 I think, you know, you asking me to do this chat this evening is just uh, an example of that, I suppose, really. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that is the heart of community radio, isn't it? I mean, I did a very similar thing three years ago when I started this, this blog. So, you know. Yeah. To quote David Brent, coming at it from a different angle. But uh, yeah, yeah, no, it is, it, it, you know, it's great ways to connect. And I think, again, I don't know why we keep going back to this thing about age, but I think as you get older, you know, you sort of, you're, you leave uni and your circle can shrink really rapidly unless yeah. Yeah, you yeah. think of ways to stay, you know, stay in that scene and meet new people. And like you started a radio station and I, I, I started a blog and it's a, it's a really yeah. cool way to just keep your finger on the pulse. And before you know it, you've got a load totally. of people around town and you can have a mix of it. It's really, really cool. It's fabulous. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, you know, even though, um, similar kind of thing, promoting nights, going out clubbing, you know, supporting one another's nights as well is important, but having that proximity is wonderful. Mm. Um, but another reason, in terms of why the radio station um, or anything like that, things that you're doing, Liam, um, appeal, I suppose, to me, is like, you know, going back to what I was saying about Doodle and the, 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 the stress of putting a club night on, mm-hmm. the financial burden, um, you know, going out on a wet Wednesday night, putting posters up and having them, having them torn down the next day by the council or whoever it was, you know, it, it just really kind of takes its toll, really. And it, there's... Mm-hmm. I suppose, um, and it's maybe, you know, going back to age, like you said, it's not as easy when you get older. You, you've got less tolerance for, you know, and it's, it, it's not, um, it does hit you when you, 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 when it doesn't go quite right and you can't win them all. And you, you know, there's a knight down the road who's got an act that's bigger or, a, you know, mm-hmm. a DJ that's slightly bigger name. And, and this, this way that, you know, I don't think we're oper- operating on that level, I suppose, really. Mm-hmm. There's no, there's no real, it's, no, it's not a competition thing. Like I said, it's a, it's a chance to bring people together, if anything. And um, mm-hmm. yeah, we're really enjoying it. But to, to be honest, it's only been 
I don't think we're quite two months in yet um, with an ever expanding um, range of DJs and shows and things. Um, but yeah, yeah, but it's going really well. Let's take a let's take a beeline to that for a bit. So how how have you been expanding? Because I know when we started, I said I'll say we when you started and I was there when when, yeah. when the station started. Um, you know we had you had programming for Friday, Saturday, Sunday, both uh, yeah. four no seven till nine, and then what would be five till seven, seven till nine. And now are we start are you starting to fill in the midweek slots? And have you got people you know people coming to you yet? Being like, have you, you know, is there anything left? Like. How's that, how's that yeah. like sort of unfolding, unfolding for you? How's it unfolded? Well, in terms of, I, th I think um, when we started, like I said, we, I kind of put the word out to uh, people I had in mind, mm -hmm. people I thought would be interested, like I said, not necessarily DJs or, or promoters or anything. Um, so there was a, it was a good list of people um, that we, we approached and what we found, we had some deadlines in mind um, and what we found was that we, you know, we were gonna we were gonna get going and start broadcasting when we hit um, a certain amount of recorded shows and we could start the get the ball rolling properly. But what we found was there was there wasn't really enough. Um, there was plenty of interest, but people hadn't submitted enough, enough of their recorded shows by the by this deadline that we had in place. Um, so what we found was that when we we we, we reached a decision that we said. Um, we're going to have to start because people like yourself think Liam, I think you were the actual, the, the very first show that we'd, we'd received. Um, and there was a handful of others mm -hmm. and we decided to just launch with, with, with that handful, I suppose, mm -hmm. really, which is why it was, which it may have appeared like a, something of a skeleton schedule at the time. Mm -hmm. um, but once, once we'd done that, what that, what happened was uh, it seemed to give the remaining people on the initial list, a bit of a kick up the bum, um, and they, you know, they, they, they started flowing in then and not only from the existing list, but from other club nights, um, prominent kind of DJs around the city, which taken us by surprise a little bit, um, mm. in terms of the variety you, you spoke of, I suppose in terms of the schedule, sorry, um, we are still largely Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, and if you tune in out, outside of the time where there's a show broadcasting, there's a huge um, playlist we've got going, which, which does kind of represent the club nights, but we do want to expand on that. Mm -hmm. um, but, and I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if you know Liam, on your, on your introductory notes, <clears throat> we did change, I did change it from uh, Manchester based because we didn't want to kind of be, um, specific to any kind of region, I suppose. So we do have station uh, shows on the station from uh, Preston, London. Uh, we're going shortly to uh, going to have one from Melbourne as well. So we we are branching out as well, which is good. Um, we've got um, a variety of things in terms of the schedule and the weekend. Um, so I suppose as the as the evenings go on, um, in, you know, the later on you go in the evening, you're going to have slightly more. Slightly tougher electronic music. Uh, Sundays is slightly slightly different vibe, that kind of thing. Um, but as as time goes on, we would very much like to kind of have shows in the week as well. Definitely, yeah. Uh, that's really good. Well, I'm sorry for if I did mention Manchester in my introduction there. No, not at all. Uh, right, radio is global. Uh, who 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 in Melbourne? I'm interested to know. Yeah, so it's a lad called Cameron. Um, how do I know Cameron? It, it would have been through party. I, I believe I know Cameron through my friend Daryl Marsden, who's based in Liverpool. Mm -hmm. uh, he's again, he's another another good friend I've made through um, clubbing and, and music and putting on parties and things. I, I believe I know uh, Cameron through through Daryl. Yeah, and he runs he runs a a house night called Hot Mess, I believe in in Melbourne. Mm -hmm. uh, so he wants to kind of promote the sounds he's he's doing out there uh, and he's kind of you know talk back into covid in, in some respects i think i believe he was he's every time i've spoken to him he's um emphasized that it's largely covid free now mm. and it's kind of back to normal so it does give us a little bit of um a little bit of hope for the future i suppose talking yeah. to him every time fingers crossed <laughs> yeah exactly that's it yeah um, I think so, yeah. So from the next point, I was like I wanted to talk a bit more about stuff we've touched on already. But I do think for me, like there's a feeling that like you know club culture and underground dance music has been under siege for a while. You know, rising rents, massive artist fees, lack of space. You know, these are all factors that have been sort of you know crushing crushing the underground. Mm. 
Uh, and this is before we like, you know, factor COVID into the situation. So how do you feel like radio helps combat that? And maybe like, how do you feel like we should be combating that more generally as like a dance community? Yeah, I mean, um, I, I totally felt that for, for, for a few years ago, there was a prominent venue, which is definitely close to my heart. Um, is it oh, the Roadhouse? I What's that? No, no, it wasn't. A, it wasn't the Roadhouse. It was when when we we put a, a lot of parties on there. We prob possibly you know considered it our home for for a few years. We had uh, lots of our big part, lots of our big successful parties there. And just going back to what you were saying about um, you know it being under siege, the whole scene. Uh, I do recall a time when uh, kind of conversations or the dialogue kind of came to an abrupt end in terms of us having uh, been able to put dates on yeah uh, it was at a time when things were going really well uh, for us at least you know all our parties were, were busy mm -hmm. uh, the bookings we made were popular lots of debuts you know that kind of thing mm -hmm. uh, like I said so the, the discussions kind of came to an abrupt end um, emails weren't being responded to like they were in the last you know in the previous months leading up to that point mm -hmm. and <clears throat> You know, reading between the lines, the response I eventually got was kind of, and this is, you know, it's no, it's no, um, it's not a reflection on the individual at the time uh, who I was dealing with, uh, far from it. It was, uh, so reading between the lines, it was a case of, um, it felt like the venue, um, they, they, they had to draw in larger crowds, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. the, the response I had was, you know, the bookings you're making uh, or the parties you're putting on despite them being really well attended um, and they're, they're, they're absolutely fine in terms of attendance and numbers through the doors, but that's purely down to you, you promoting the parties the way you do. Mm -hmm. um, what we really want to have is um, we, we, we want to have guests that the minute they're announced, they're going to sell out regardless of promotion, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. which I thought was a, I just thought was a sad reflection really. And like I said, um, what I took from that was that for it to be such a sudden change, uh, I got the impression it may have been down to something like, you know, the, the rents going up, that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. I suppose, you know, club, club venue, clubs and bars, they're going to be at the mercy of landlords um, regardless, I suppose, you know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. I don't know, I suppose in terms of response to that, I'm really proud of um, Manchester and specifically venues just like Eastern Block, really, who, mm -hmm. you know, um, you can guarantee it'll be full of local talent. Um, and that's and they very much pride themselves on that, really. And it's, I, you know, for me, it's a bit of an antithesis to everyone else. And it's a fabulous little venue. And I think we should be really proud of places like that, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, because you know it's a, it's everything's totally free it's it's, it's showcasing every, the best of what we've got here mm -hmm. um yeah i think yeah the way they've responded and the way they you know they've changed um from being a, a record store to a cafe and a, and a kind of venue um yeah it's a real success and i'm yeah very proud of it like i said yeah yeah cool um would you like to say anything about white hotel as well because all of our past guests have mentioned it and i think it's going to be like a little tick list for me now for any show anything nice to say about that just so i can say we've mentioned white hotel <laughs> well do you know what the other week uh i don't know what i was in that neck of the woods i was driving down um is it very old road or very new road you are, I, I don't drive a car so you're asking the wrong person man oh okay. no it <laughs> It was Cheetham Hill Road. It was Cheetham Hill Road. And I was, uh, no, no, whichever one it was, the one with the warehouses on. Yeah. And I thought, you know what, I'm just going to take a little de a detour. And I drove down to literally outside the front door of White mm. Hotel. And just, yeah, yearning for, for, for them to open, I suppose. Um, I've only been a handful of times, probably no more than four or five times, really, I don't think. And it was around this time last year, my friend Emma had a, uh, her birthday there uh, mm. did, in I think it was the 20th of December. And um, yeah, I miss the place. And I do especially miss the fact that they don't have that bar anymore yeah. that's in the floor, <laughs> which is a pity. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, what a venue. Just, again, a, a, another venue to really be proud of. You know, it's mm. um, absolutely fantastic. And, you know, um, it's one of those places that people talk of, big DJs actually talk of it being... Um, you know, retaining that proper spirit of actual, a real genuine party. Um, mm. And for that to be in our, in our town, in our, in our city is again, something to really be proud of. Definitely. Yeah. Cool.
Yeah. Yeah. I think it is worth noting as well that although we have seen a lot of like good places closed in the last few years, like Mantra is another one, Roadhouse, as I mentioned earlier, mm. um, you know, Manchester is, has still got a lot, a lot going for it, certainly for any city outside of London. And I think, um, I think it's easy when we live in it to sort of take that for granted for some, and there is like less venues than we'd ideally want, but it's still like, mm-hmm. there's a diverse range of things you can, you can do and go to. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah I mean, sorry, that, yeah. Well, no, I was going to say, no, you just remind you, you've reminded me of, uh, that mantra place, which is there. That's made me sad actually as well. That was a <laughs> fabulous place, wasn't it? So yeah. this is like a wistful podcast, isn't it? Just like, I don't know. Yeah, teary eyed yeah. looking back and look at all these great venues, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that was a fabulous place. Yeah, the Roadhouse again. We put some parties on there. We had um, Max Grafe on there actually. Mm-hmm. I was one of the parties I put on with my friend Rob. Um, unfortunately, again, it was uh, I don't know how, but at the time it was a fabulous booking. He was huge at the time. Mm-hmm. About ten people came. It was crazy. <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah. I mentioned but Roadhouse before because when I looked at your uh, when I looked at the, the roster of DJs you had, I was like they'd all go really well in the Roadhouse, uh, yeah. so that's why I sort of jumped to that uh, in my earlier question. Um, but you know, like with all that doom and gloom being said, um, you know, underground radio and digital radio have provided a vital outlet, you know, for DJs to practice their craft. Certainly in the past year, so do you feel like collectors and DJs need to think more creatively about their routes into events? And, you know, does radio provide that? Like, you know, what's your take? Yeah, I suppose, um, you know, producers, DJs, compared to um, many years ago, they've got, they've got so many more tools at their disposal, really, to, mm-hmm. to create some path than they did before. Um, you know, to use kind of bedroom DJs as, a, as, a, as an example, they can host live streams, Mm-hmm. broadcast sets to the world um there's so many different avenues creatively to uh, they, they can go down you know mm-hmm. collaborating with other bands from all over the world producers from all over the world we've seen a lot of that recently i suppose mm-hmm. um but you know equally i think and this is kind of reflects on what happened with us at doodle is just kind of um you know broadcasting things mixes with your mates you're having mm-hmm. fun with your mates and and, and making that um a kind of yardstick for, for 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 you know how to move forward because like i said we when will left for london um and it was kind of left for a little bit and i'd gone to croatia and i i'd kind of um real again realized how hard it was to put on these nights kind of mm-hmm. thing but at the same time really missed it weirdly you know and i think mm-hmm. i've been like i said been to croatia and i've met i'd met a lot of the guests that we previously put on um mm-hmm. And, and whilst out and about clubbing in uh, ADE or whatever it was, you know, and they would ask me, you know, when's your next party? Your party was great. I was like, oh, God, I, I, I'm surprised you remember who I am kind of thing. That yeah. was, but for them, for them to remember Doodle and remember the party was quite something. So I thought, you know what, let's, let's get back together, this kind of thing. But I, I, I recruited a, a Motley crew of mates to help me out basically because I was insistent that you know it wasn't going to be a one-man band you know we yeah. struggled with just the two of us kind of thing so mm-hmm. so going going back to basics um and just what so, so what we what we decided was um we needed I think what the mistake mistake we made at the beginning was not um we, we hadn't developed a following so to speak we we just kind of went with big bookings I suppose without mm-hmm. having had any kind of you know history leading up to that point or kind of yeah. parties with mates that kind of thing so that's what we did we kind of decamped to the deaf institute and we had small free parties <clears throat> we would all we would all as a collective kind of contribute uh what was it a tenner a month or whatever it was mm-hmm. so we had money in the bank to pay for any any gear we needed music wise any you know any um deposits on the venue and we would insist even though it was a free party <clears throat> excuse me we'd insist on giving the dj 100 pounds and mm. that was kind of the deal they, they, they weren't again they weren't necessarily household names um they weren't all from manchester but uh, a lot of them were again the, the, the likes of you know your samids for example mm-hmm. um uh other other club promoters that kind of thing um people who you knew were going to put on a good party tom lynch from development for example um so going back to basics um, and developing that smaller kind of following to, to move forward was really important. So I suppose that goes back to 
um, what, yeah, in, in terms of radio shows and artists, you know, just going back to basics and doing, having fun, really, I suppose. That's mm -hmm. what I would say. Um, you know, and to the extent to which you can get creative with Instagram stories, mixed cloud, live streams, the, it's like all of these things are the modern equivalent of coming into the Northern Quarter on a rainy night, putting posters up or handing a, a mixtape to someone or a mix CD to someone back in the day. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's so just so many more things you can do, I suppose. Really, yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, it is tricky. So, yeah, going back to your point about the club night as well, like finding that following first. It make you know, everyone says, "Oh, you get your following before you book the big names, so people remember your brand and not them." But like, that's yeah. really really difficult as well, isn't it? You can't. It's not just as like you know, you know, you might be able to do that for a few ones, but it's not easy. It's just as probably difficult and stressful as going down the big name route, because at least the big name route, yeah. provided you don't tank three nights in a row, you can probably get, recoup it back. And um, yeah. yeah, I do think like the, the tools that people dispose on now, and you've still got to compete a lot, probably even more so in terms of noise and other people pulling attention away from what you're doing. But I mean, like the overheads are next to none. And like, if you've just got a, a show, a radio show, for me, like it's another string to my bow. Like, I do, you know, I've got the podcast, I've got the blogs, I've got the mix, I write articles. Like, yeah. there's another thing that, like, says, like, I'm not just somebody who can press sync button on a mix track pro, you know, it's, uh, Absolutely. yeah. Okay, so yeah, I wanted to ask you as well to sort of, like, close off the, the, the show, you know, what are the plans for Ripe going forward? I mean, you've just been going for over a month. So, you know, what are the milestones you're planning in the next few months and maybe, like, next year? I suppose um, one of the things we did really want to to do um, is basically put some parties on. You mm. know, if I'm if I'm totally honest, uh, with you know, especially considering the kind of the talent, the the club nights we've got on, the the huge variety of, of DJs and shows and musical tastes and influences we've got on the show on the on the shows already. Mm. Um, but you know, and and within that, we've got we've got writers, graphic designers, video makers, a uh, huge amount of collective and creative people um, and making, making the use of that as well. And I think as we're still finding our feet, what we very much want to do is for it to be a collective enterprise and for, for, for all of those people who've got all of those skills um, and all that creativity and flair to be involved and for it to evolve uh, you know, in a way which which um, gives them a bit of a platform as well, to be honest with you. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously to just to kind of spread the message a bit further and get get some more shows on the schedule as well, really. It's, it's a two-man band at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we would like to kind of, like I said, involve uh, the people that are putting shows on at the moment to kind of support us. And to, we, you know, we might, we might ask people to do a lot of the uploading perhaps themselves to take a little bit of pressure off us and again to make it a collective process i suppose really um yeah. we've, got our, we've, we've just got a, a band involved as well so you know some live streams is certainly something we want to we want to try and do mm -hmm. um like i said if we can do some parties maybe representing um the different towns and cities we're in around the uk mm -hmm. uh Maybe Melbourne one day, who knows? Yeah. I mean, go, yeah. Global, go <laughs> global quickly. That's what you need to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But uh, like I said, we, we're really enjoying the process at the moment. Um, mm. And I think, like I said, I think it's going down. From, we've had nothing but positivity from everyone. Um, and yeah, we've just really enjoyed the way it's going and uh, long may it continue, really. Yeah. I mean, with, I think with anything like this, the key is consistency and... It is yeah. slog, slogging through the bits where maybe it feels like yeah. people aren't paying attention. I don't think that's the case with Right Radio at all, but certainly from running my own blog, if you're not doing it because you enjoy doing it, then you're probably doing it for the wrong reasons because these that's things great. are marathons, not sprints, aren't they? And uh, it's just, yeah, it's just being it. happy to write some stupid article, Liam, that no one's going to read, but I don't mind because I enjoy doing it. Like Absolutely. Of course, yeah. yeah. Amazing. Uh, it was really, really fun to chat to you this evening, Charlie. Thanks so much for, for coming on the show. Um, yeah, it was great having you on and uh, I'll catch you in a bit. Hopefully, just to let all the listeners know uh, and the people watching this, we haven't actually met face to face before yet, ever. I think this is the that's first time we've actually seen each other face to face and that's just digitally. So again, that's the yeah. power of the power of radio for you, bringing people together. Absolutely. So yeah. yes, pints are on the cards that's because... 
with the All yeah. My Friends show on Right Radio. And we need to be reviewing some pubs, really. Any excuse. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Thanks ever so much, Liam. No worries, man. Catch you in a bit. Lovely. Thank you. Bye-bye.